It was the consideration of our 11th report to FATF. And FATF has now acknowledged by consensus, which is important to emphasize, that all action items have been largely addressed by Pakistan. The 2018 action plan has been closed and no pendency of action remains on part of Pakistan. On the 2021 action plan, the plan has been closed and no pendency of action remains on part of Pakistan. On the 2021 action plan, which was mostly related to money laundering issues, Pakistan submitted three progress reports in total. I am very pleased to announce that Pakistan has completed the entire seven-point action plan a year ahead of the given timelines. This speaks volumes about the comprehensive reforms that have been carried out in Pakistan in the AML CFT domain and the sustained momentum of our efforts and the result of the efforts also. Because as you can see, the first action plan took us much longer. This action plan we have actually ended before timeline. And this is something which was very well recognized throughout the plenary by all the members. Pakistan's positive and speedy progress was greatly appreciated and welcomed by FATF members. Now, FATF has acknowledged completion of both action plans by Pakistan. The progress made and recognized by our commitment to uh, improve our AML CFT systems. Consequent to the fruitful discussions held in the plenary, the FATF has decided by consensus that Pakistan has addressed all technical benchmarks and has completed all requirements of both action plans, that of 2018 and that of 2021. As a result of this, what we consider to be no less than a Herculean feat and a remarkable achievement, FATF has now authorized an on-site visit of its technical team to Pakistan to validate the process of implementation of reforms. Now, let me emphasize over here, because there might be some confusion, this is part of the procedure of, de of taking Pakistan out of the gray list. When you authorize a country's removal from the gray list, the second step is, or the first step is, that you authorize an on-site technical evaluation which has been done in this plenary. The successful completion of FATF action plans and its formal endorsement uh, by FATF means that Pakistan is one step away from exiting the gray list, inshallah. The on-site visit is a procedural requirement. It marks the beginning of the end process that will eventually culminate in the exit of Pakistan from the FATF's gray list, inshallah and hopefully forever. We are closely working with FATF to arrange the on-site visit at mutually convenient dates with a view to conclude the entire process before the October plenary 2022. During our interactions on the sidelines of the FATF plenary, we stressed Pakistan's high-level political commitment to strengthen our AML CFT regime and bring it at par with global standards. We have been highlighting complete national consensus and I cannot emphasize on this enough. And I can assure you that it is this, this government's commitment that we will take this forward with national consensus. And we will celebrate the national consensus, inshallah. I want to take this opportunity to also stress once again that Pakistan's cooperation with FATF and the international community is grounded in our strategic objective, in our own strategic objective of strengthening our economy and improving the integ its integration with the international financial system. I'm confident that with this good news from FATF, it will restore confidence in our economy and will give us a much needed boost. Improve investment climate and a robust AML CFT compliance systems. I also want to acknowledge, in fact, I really want to emphasize uh, on the tireless efforts of our teams who have really done a tremendous job and burnt the midnight oil in achieving all of these strenuous difficult, complicated targets. This was indeed a whole of country response, uh, and I think that is something to celebrate. Multiple departments, agencies, both at the federal and provincial levels have contributed to this national cause. It also demonstrates that when we work together, all of country, all of nation, we can achieve sometimes what is considered to be impossible. I also want to say that this is going to be a cross-government effort. Uh, I really want to emphasize that because I know a lot of talk has been done about it. Uh, this is an effort for the state of Pakistan. Uh, governments will come and go, but Pakistan's consensus and Pakistan's efforts on this, I hope, will continue in stride. 
I want to convey our gratitude to our international partners and friends for their understanding, for their constant support and cooperation throughout this lengthy, arduous process. By the grace of Allah, Pakistan is in a position now, now that it can, it can not only can it sustain its trajectory of reforms well into the future, but also really, we'll, and that's what we look forward to, provide guidance and technical support to other countries in this area. We feel we are a little bit ahead of the curve. In fact, we are quite ahead of the curve. We want to sustain that. We want to sustain that place, continue to be ahead of the curve, to remain there. Um, and really be, in some ways, a, a, a model for other countries to follow. I know that we are far ahead within the financial regulatory systems, um, within CFT uh, legislation, uh, within AML legislation, within the PAC, within the region, but we're also looking very good when you, do, when you compare us against international benchmarks. And I'm sure that we will be fully prepared for on-site visit and we will exit the gray list at the earliest, inshallah. Um, with that, I come to the end of my statement, but I want to emphasize over here one thing that we, as a nation, must uh, remember and uh, respect. Uh, that is some issues related to the confidentiality requirements within this. In the past, I want to emphasize this um, at the very outset, in the past, our urge to share news has harmed us. Okay, so I hope you noticed that we were very, very careful in allowing the plenary to f take the decision, to announce the decision, because you can never prejudge. Uh, and any time you try to prejudge and speak before your time, it has always come back to hurt you. So this as a nation, not only as a government, is something that we need to do well in order to complete the start of the end. And this will not be the end because this will be, inshallah, then a new beginning, where Pakistan is uh, looking towards strengthening its own systems according to its own requirements and get out of the requirements of having to report to others but continue to report to itself. Thank you, Madam Minister. Uh, I'm here to facilitate the questions and answer <coughs> session. Uh, I already see a lot of interest. Uh, my only request would be when you pose a question, please identify yourself and please restrict yourself to uh, one question per person so that everyone has a chance. Yes, sir, please. So, Helbert from the Asian Telegraph. Sir, Pakistan was given a 27 point agenda in 2018 and another in 2021. Has FATF recognized that that was unprecedented and a huge burden on a single country to implement two action plans? Yes. It was quite unprecedented. Uh, we were, in fact, uh, the only country which has had two simultaneous action plans to implement. And that's why I said it was tedious, it was arduous, it was difficult, it was technically requirements were cross-agency, cross-institutions. Um, uh, there was legal frameworks to take care of. There were amendments to do. And then there was institutionalization of those amendments uh, of, 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 of the new laws. Uh, building of structures, building of systems. So really, I think we have... We can, uh, it's too early to celebrate because I genuinely believe that once, you know, you can't prejudge anything. Uh, we have an on-site visit, but we have started the process, as I said. Uh, and within that context, uh, yes, we were the only country ever in the history of FATF to go through two simultaneous plans, action plans at the same time, one of 2021 and uh, one of 2018, as you well know, which is a total of 34, uh, you know, workable working points altogether. Mr. Jaz. Second row. I Pakistan when I was in last I was Pakistan hopeful that we would go out of this way, but this was a very long journey. Which key issues or key problems were the reasons why it took so much time? And what, as we hear, in the Islamabad, what was influence in the Islamabad? political influence in this country? जो हैडल रहा या हम कहीं चीज क्यों कुछ चीजों में लैग करते थे देखें आई थिंक एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम वी कैन बी पॉजिटिव अबाउट आर जर्नी वी हैव द लग्जरी टू बी पॉजिटिव अबाउट आर जर्नी बिकॉज गिव एंड टेक इवेंचुअली वट एवर वी डिड वॉज इन पाकिस्तान इंटरेस्ट इट स्टेंड इन पाकिस्तान सिस्टम टू इनेबल पाकिस्तान टू बी ए रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू बी सीन एंड टू बी ऑल्सो ए रिस्पॉन्सिबल कंट्री uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, in some ways providing a model of legal framework now 
to the world. We have always emphasized that FATF must remain apolitical and technical and impartial, obviously. This is an emphasis that we have always done at every interaction that we've had, and uh, we would hope that will continue. Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, why did it not happen before? This was a very intensive process. The uh, action plan was um, minutely detailed. It required many, many actions, as I've just explained, at many, many different levels. So it was obviously time-consuming. Where uh, you should be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. And I hope you saw some of that being reflected, how this government uh, took this up, because uh, you need to be, uh, and, and this preparation was over the last many years, so we absolutely are willing to share credit with whoever wants, uh, you know, a piece of the pie. Uh, I think this is a battle for Pakistan. This is not a battle for any, anyone, any, you know, anyone at all. Uh, second row, uh, Imran, sir. Mohammed Imran, Dunia TV, sir. Ma'am, abhi aapne kaha ke jo aap ek debate chal rahi hai credit ki sawale se. Abhi aapne kaha ke jo credit lena chahte hain, ham dene ke bhi tiyar hain ho. Tam mujhe bhi dene ke liye tiyar hain. तो जब ये सारी लेजिस्लेशन हो रही थी जब प्रोसेस हो रहा था तो उस लेजिस्लेशन के दौरान तो पीडीएम जिसका आप पार्ट एंड पार्सल थी तो वो बाइकआउट करता रहा वॉकआउट करते रहे तो फिर अब आप अब जाकर इसको रियासत का फैसला और रियासत की विक्ट्री डिक्लेयर कर रही हैं तो उस वक्त अंडरस्टैंडिंग नहीं थी कि ये रियासत के लिए बहुत जरूरी है इस लेजिस्लेशन को पास करना नहीं देखें वो ही लेजिस्लेशन हमने कमेटीज में पार्लियामेंट्री कमेटीज में पास की اپوزیشن نے مل کے پاس کی ہمیں طریقہ کار سے پرابلم تھی بکوز بلڈوز کرنا اور جو آپ بات کہہ رہے ہیں کہ کنسنسز بلڈ کرنا اس کے ساتھ میں انگیج کرنا وہ سب کچھ نہیں ہوا بٹ لیٹ بائی گونز بھی بائی گونز آئی تنگ پاکستان شوڈ بی فورورڈ لکنگ پاکستان شوڈ بی فوکسٹ پاکستان شوڈ ہیو آل آف گورنمنٹ اپروچ پاکستان شوڈ ہیو آل آف نیشن اپروچ اینڈ دیٹس وائی ایم سینگ لیٹس ناٹ بوائے یو نو بوگ ار سیلز ڈاؤن وتھ دیز ان نیسیسری ڈیبیٹس دیر ان نیسیسری دیر If anything, they, can't, they don't bring any good. So, I am saying that if I give credit, I will give my team. And the team will give my team. Because we are representing Pakistan's team. Because we are representing government. We are representing the state of Pakistan right now. So, I would give credit to every member of the team. Those who are celebrated, who are visible in front of you, and those who are not, who are in the background. And perhaps the ones in the background do much more work than the ones that are visible. So, I would really, I, I, I know how much work has gone into it by various agencies, by various entities. So I think we need to, and having said that, I still need to say, let's, let's not be overly uh, celebratory right now. Na? Matlab, we still have, the uh, process has started, but abhi, uh, the on-site visit is due. And after uh, this, uh, our journey will continue. Karegi. This uh, strengthening of legislation, strengthening of administration will continue. Adil sir, followed by Anas. This is Adil Bashir from Rose News. The first question is, do you think that there was a political motivation for keeping Pakistan on the gray list for such a long time? The other one is, was there an issue in our foreign policy due to which Pakistan was placed on the gray list? Were we not able to present our case before FATF in an effective manner? Thank you. Again, I will desist from commenting on anything which casts a negative light on any effort that has been done uh, at all. So I will skip your last two questions and come to your first question. Was, it, uh, was Pakistan's gray listing in any way political? Uh, as I said, we have always emphasized that FATF must remain apolitical in its conduct because it's an important body, it has an important work to do. However, we do know that there were certain countries involved, a certain singular country at least that we all can name and emphasize, which has always tried to make this process a political one and which has um, been a spanner in the wheels. And to uh, realize that that certain countries, in the presence of that certain country, we got this through consensus uh, is an important point. So we had to be more white than others, for sure. Uh, but that means we, uh, that just shows you how much, uh, meaning how much we have attained, how much we, how much we have achieved. Thank you so much, spokesperson. Anas uh, Maliman. My question is for you uh, that in the, upon the conclusion of the February 2019 plenary, uh, we saw a statement com coming in from the FATF that specified 
that Pakistan needs to take action, particularly on counter-terror financing, against 34 individuals of eight organizations of concern. And those organizations were named, namely Al-Qaeda, Lashkar-e-Taiba, Jawad al-Dawa, Jashim Muhammad, the Tehreek Taliban Afghanistan, the Haqqani Network. Now my question is very specific. What has Pakistan done against these 34 individuals as specified by the FATF to convince them, number one, and number two, yesterday we saw in the press conference by the FATF president that it called for an irreversible action. So what is Pakistan going to do ahead of the visit, of the on-site visit, to convince them that, yes, this action is irre irreversible? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's get the facts correct, okay? Uh, Pakistan doesn't need to do anything from now until on-site visit. What Pakistan needs to do is to prepare itself for an on-site visit, which is going to be technical evaluation of all the claims that Pakistan has made, which have been accepted. Uh, as I said, all action plan items have been ticked off. Largely addressed, nothing is pending on behalf on, on, on Pakistan to do. No actions are pending on Pakistan to do. Now, when it comes to uh, the specifics of, uh, you know, clearly we did enough uh, to get a green light on this, right? that we ticked all the boxes. And uh, within that context, I just want to say that let it be, let's be clear. I think when it comes to the prosecution, going after people, anyone who's involved in terror, terrorist, terrorism financing, that's an agenda that Pakistan has also. It's a national agenda also. So when does a country do well? A country is able to do well within the international framework when it's domestic agenda and international, I feel it is aligned. So we're not doing anything for anyone. We're doing it for Pakistan and in the process, we're ensuring that our economy also gets the boost because no country, and this question was asked to me in Berlin also, no country would ever like to be on the grey list. It has repercussions, it has ramifications, and no country would choose to remain on the grey list. Take one question from there, uh, Kamran, followed by uh, Ms. Roman. Saad. My name is Kamran Raja, and I have two questions. Uh, Recently, Pakistan got a good news from FATF, and, uh, which leads Pakistan to exit from the FATF grey list. And uh, second, uh, my question is, do you see the role of any specific political party or institution in completing our FATF action plans? And my second question is that, what actions have been taken to enable our institutions to meet the future challenges in the anti-money laundering and CFT? Combating financial terrorism. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't quite understand your last question. Second question: What actions are going to be taken? Gee, as I said, okay. Again, uh, I think it's less about specific actions and more about the framework that you build, right? As I said, there were lots of issues that you know there was a lot of work that went into it. If you look at the list of amendments and new legislation that we had to do, it's actually like 50, 30 plus altogether. Some at the provincial level, some at the national level, some at various levels. Now, you can't just do legislation. You also have to make sure that the legislation is implementable. For that, you have to work on the institutions that are going to implement it, create different frameworks, create different bodies. So this has been a very intensive process. I think what we have now is a good body of work, of legislation, and institutional strengthening that exists for us to have a speed of our own. And as I mentioned to you earlier, what we would want is, what is an ideal scenario for Pakistan? That Pakistan gets out of the vagaries of reporting to an international agency and gets into reporting to its own system and working within its own legal framework uh, to achieve what we consider to be national priorities also. As I said, they're aligned over here. They're not a counter uh, to our national priorities in any way. And your first question was any institution. Dekhe, I said it at the very outset. Uh, I think uh, in the last 20 years of having been in this space, there's one thing that I've learned. There's no limit to what you can achieve if you don't care who gets the credit. As on behalf of the Foreign Office of Pakistan, the nation, every, many institutions, uh, pretty much when, I, when we say national consensus, we're referring to the parliament, we're referring to everyone. We are saying this is a Pakistan win. Uh, we let it remain a Pakistan win. Yeah. Zishan, over there. Uh, 
Zishan Bhatti from PTV News. Uh, India has been reports of FATF in violation of uh, FATF rules. Has Pakistan raised this issue with FATF? And secondly, what lessons have been learned by Pakistan during last four years in this process? Okay, the, the second question can take a whole day. <laughs> I think we've learned many lessons and uh, the one, perhaps the biggest lesson that we've learned is that uh, it is wise to ensure May I, for instance, in the fact of, you know, you know, in interacting with people, that's a lesson learned. Never again will we want to be part of any list which requires us to divert our attention from our national, you know, requirements to just reporting requirements. Uh, so never again is the lesson that we've learned, that we never want to slip into this again. Uh, that's the biggest lesson. Um, on confidentiality rules, what do you think is the answer? Of course we did. And uh, within that context, I have to say we, I feel, covered some ground. Because I think it is a very, okay, why are we so respectful of this? Why are we so respectful of the fact that we don't share information which is not meant to be shared? Because there are very strong confidentiality rules. FATF takes it very, very seriously. So you're actually endangering the credibility of the country when you do that. Now, that certain country that you mentioned has openly been doing it, okay, and has been openly caught doing it. Uh, and uh, there is obviously a great deal of, I think, understanding amongst other members that that is incorrect and should not happen. But we, even within that context, I say, let's concentrate on the positive, let's concentrate on what we've been able to do, and that is an area that we are taking care of, that we are taking up with everyone, that we are raising uh, at every forum. Uh, first row, Shabir. So, uh, as we know that, uh, I'm Shabir Wagra from PT World, as we know that different ministries play a role in this whole process. So what role Ministry of Foreign Affairs has played during Pakistan's grey listing? And also, uh, now, how these responsibilities has changed with the delegation of all the responsibilities on you as Minister of State being the in charge? Well, um, what, how that responsible? I think Ministry of Foreign Affairs has actually been playing a role even when its minister or minister of state was not uh, leading uh, the National Steering Committee. Uh, I think you, most of you might be very well aware of the role throughout this process in the last four years. The ministry was actually housing all the major or the lead agency in all the major interactions. Uh, sometimes, like many of us, going beyond the call of duty, uh, I know our uh, DGCT and different people have taken that role, and the one who is currently there, you know, uh, Amare, uh, the, all the officers within that team. Uh, I'm actually very, very impressed when I get any briefings from them, when I see them work, when, when, uh, and knowing how much hard work they've put in and how ahead of the curve they are. So, uh, to me, obviously, this ministry has played a critical, a pivotal role in the strategic planning, in their interagency work, in inter interprovincial coordination sometimes, sometimes having to go down to, you know, I don't want to again go into the details, but uh, allow me to say that, uh, yes, we have played a critical role. We will continue to play uh, in a, a, a very, you know, a, a critical or, or a crucial role. Um, and as I said, I think it's very important, it's exceptionally important that we recognize everyone's effort in this. Uh, this could not have been done by any single entity, ministry, institution, foreign affairs, anyone. Had you said, okay, oh, we will take care of anything, virtually impossible to do it. So yes, we've been playing a critical role, and inshallah, we will continue to play an effective Question role. from the gentleman in the first row, uh, followed by Mr. Pracha in the last row. Uh, we were watching this uh, legislation work in the context of uh, FATF, and then there was an institutional format that was coming up. And I personally saw that there was some policy reluctance and capacity deficiency. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? Policy reluctance and uh, capacity deficiency. Thinking policy reluctance and capacity deficiency are part of life, right? And you always keep on wanting to strengthen the deficiencies that exist. Uh, as I, when I say that we are now not only comparable to international s uh, standards, but ahead of international stands. So if you look at overall factor of recommendations and where Pakistan stands, other countries stand, you will be shocked. We are ahead of the curve in many ways. Now the challenge for us is, is to continue with this momentum, inshallah, even after we are out of this process. 
that is the challenge for Pakistan and that is also the concern that has been raised. And for that, institutionalization of this whole process is exceptionally important. So I think from now onwards, we have to strengthen the institutions whose core responsibility, you know, DG Sahib here sitting, whose core responsibility is to take the process forward. And by the way, in answer to that question, obviously we can't miss out the, you know, the foreign affairs because I think we were doing so much which was not our core role that I mentioned all of that and not mention the intensive diplomatic work that we had to do at the level of the foreign minister also, uh, you know, consistently, persistently, every interaction that we have, every capital. Um, and this diplomatic work happens from top down, but all of government approach. But so I, I think the role of the diplomatic uh, reach, uh, outreach that we did uh, is quite substantial. I would uh, weigh on it very heavily because you can have a very good case, but you also have to present uh, I, I think we can. Okay. Thank you, Madam, for MOS. Glad to find you back in the leadership role of this ministry. Uh, when we say, जब हम ये कहते हैं कि on-site inspection के लिए team आएगी, वो क्या देखने आएंगे? क्या वो बंद हैं या कोई ऐसा structure खड़ा है जिसको आपकी हुकूमत ने पेपर्स में या पाकिस्तान की रियासत ने पेपर्स में डिसमेंटल किया है क्या वो देखने आएंगे सेकेंडली सिंस इट्स अ मैटर ऑफ काउंटर टेररिज्म वेदर देयर वाज एनी कंसर्न अबाउट ऑन गोइंग टॉक्स इन काबुल और पेशावर विद द टीटीपी पर्सन बिकॉज द अल्टीमेट गोल इज टू फाइट आउट टेररिस्ट एंटिटीज नॉट टू नेगोशिएट विद देम थैंक यू श्योर Interesting questions. On the second question, I will just say before, as you know, uh, FATF is supposed to be a completely technical body, right? Once you go into, uh, you know, through a process, once you're nominated to be re-listed, there's a process that you follow and there's an action plan given. And that action plan is quite specific to what needs to be done. So the second question, yours, does not arise because this is obviously not part of any of the action plan items at all. Uh, this is an internal matter for Pakistan, I think, and this is obviously has no bearing on on the work that we did with FATF. Or ye apne jo pucha kya dekhna aenge? I think dekhi maine pehle bahut vazahat me kaha aur me me ye vazahat bhi kariyo aur sachai bhi kari hu ki wo ye dekhna aenge ki jo jo chizein humne report ki hain ki ye hum legislation kar chuke hain, ye hum body bana chuke hain. FATF secretariat hai, operate karta hai, uske niche aur log operate karte hain. Inter प्रोविंशियल कोऑर्डिनेशन कैसे होती है नेशनल एंड प्रोविंशियल की कोऑर्डिनेशन के लिए कौन सी बॉडी है नेशनल स्टेडिंग कमेटी का क्या काम है वर्किंग ग्रुप का क्या काम है कौन सी एजेंसी क्या क्या ये सब कुछ एक टेक्निकल इवैल्यूएशन ऑन साइट इवैल्यूएशन में देखी जाएगी सो so, इसमें कोई रॉकेट साइंस भी नहीं है उभाम भी नहीं है ढकी चुकी बात भी नहीं है लेकिन अगर हम बहुत डिटेल में ये सब कुछ नहीं जाना चाहेंगे वो इसलिए जाना नहीं जाना चाहेंगे बिकॉज उनका एक टेक्निकल काम है अगर उसके आगे पीछे बहुत क्या सराई हो जाए मैं ये बार बार दो टोक अल्फाज में कह रही हूं उसने पाकिस्तान को हार्म किया है और अर्ज टू क्विकली यू नो शेयर द न्यूज और टू बी द विनर इन गिविंग यू द न्यूज हैज ऑलवेज हार्म डस ओके सो इनके काम को हमने उनको स्पेस देनी है और उनको ये कंफर्ट प्रोवाइड करना है कि आप अपना काम आराम से कर सकेंगे यहां पर सो so, हमारी बहुत कोशिश होगी कि हम उनका काम आराम से सुकून से उनको एक टेक्निकल तरीके से हैंडल होता जाए और उसको किसी तरीके से पोलिटिसाइज ना किया जाए और आप लोग ये सारे प्लीज समझें कि हमारे इंटरेस्ट में है कि ये टाइम पे हो जाए इस वक्त अगर हमारे सामने कोई गोल है कोई ऑब्जेक्टिव है जिसके ऊपर टाइमलाइन है वो ये है कि हम अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी की प्लेनरी से पहले ये तमाम प्रोसेस खत्म कर लें दैट्स नॉट गोइंग टू बी इजी टास्क इट्स नॉट गोइंग बी एन इम्पॉसिबल टास्क ऑल्सो बट इट विल रिक्वायर सम हार्ड वर्क एंड सम क्वाइट Sometimes diplomacy, sometimes quiet hard work at the technical level. So we we are very keen to see this process through quietly. I am emphasizing that word, quietly. Sir Navid Sudiki and the gentleman on your right, both of you, uh, one after the other. Uh, thank you. This is Navid Sudiki from Dawn News. Uh, Ma'am, there are reports that some friendly countries of Pakistan. Have helped to uh, get Pakistan uh, out of grey list. Your comments, please. Okay, you know I will say this with a lot of confidence that friendly <coughs> countries. I mean, I mentioned to you diplomatic outreach. That's always there. A diplomatic outreach to say, but diplomatic outreach. Please, wait. You know I want to emphasize this. Diplomatic outreach for 
One possibility could be, oh, Pakistan is not able to do its work, Pakistan has not done, not done anything on its action plan, but please help us. Versus diplomatic outreach, we have not only honored all of our commitments, we have overperformed, we have, uh, uh, you know, met, not only met the timelines, we have outperformed the timelines, we have done it ahead of time. So now that friendly country's assistance, in some ways, is an assistance that we deserve. So, no, I'm not going to name them because I think they can. We know who are the friendly countries. All I'm saying is Pakistan has deserved this. <coughs> Please, I, I want you to, uh, you know, completely. Uh, yes, we always reach out to many friendly countries, but I want to emphasize this, that Pakistan has earned this process. The start of the end is something that Pakistan has earned through its sheer hard work, through uh, consistent, persistent work, um, and through in across the, uh, you know, different strains of government, uh, national approach to problem solving. So we have really earned this place. And diplomatic outreach is obviously very important because you are talking about it before, political, we don't have to say it political. We have given a country to say this whole process is political. And for that, we have a lot of friendly countries. We have a very intensive engagement at every level. I mentioned uh, even at the foreign minister's level, at every level. Uh, my name is Abdul Sattar. I'm from NPR, National Public Radio of America. I'm here. Oh, okay. yeah. Pakistan has really worked hard to ensure that it comes out of that list. Uh, but do you think uh, turning a blind eye allegedly or permitting groups like Tehri Kilabek, Pakistan, Defense Sipai Sahaba and some other extremist groups to roam about the country carrying out a hate mongering against religious and sectarian minorities and trying to harm Pakistan's relation with important countries that are the part of the European Union that also play an important role in FATF could pose any challenge or you think it is purely internal issue of Pakistan? Nothing remains an internal issue when it has uh, problematic repercussions, right? But as I said at the very outset, and I think I would like to limit myself to that, that what is the lesson learned it was asked? The lesson learned is never again. Uh, not for the sake of others, but for the sake of ourselves. Pakistan wants to have a very different reputation than the one that we've bogged ourselves down for many, many decades. We need to move away from that. And we, are, we have happily started that trajectory. I think the start of the trajectory, frankly speaking, was in 2008 after, you know, we, we decided, ke, yes, you can talk, but if talks fail, then you have to do something about it, right? Uh, so I, I'm quite confident, inshallah, that if we... Uh, do not bicker, do not let this momentum go away. We should very clearly be on the trajectory of our way out and uh, again, as I said, never again. Never go back to the same place, never make the same mistakes again. Last row, uh, Changesa. Changesa Khan Jadun Unji, Pyaam Khaibar News se. 22 crore awam jo thi, wo aapki muntazir thi, Madam Minister ke kal jiswa kataab ki video viral hui, तो दफ्तर खारजा ने उसे फौरी तौर पे आगे चलाया जिसकी वजह से सांसें जो थी वो बहाल हुई 22 करोड़ عوام की जब आपने ये खुशखबरी सुनाई अब आपसे सवाल ये है कि जैसा कि अभी आपने अपनी स्टेटमेंट में भी फरमाया कि लेजिस्लेशन या जितने मामले हैं वो सारे हमारे स्मूथली हो रहे हैं चाहे मैशत है चाहे इंसानी हकूक है हमारे पड़ोस में एक ऐसा मुल्क है जिसने इंडिया कश्मीर पे कब्जा किया हुआ है कभी वो बीएलए की सूरत में हम पे हमलावर होता है कभी टीटीपी की सूरत में कभी कलपोषण यादव की सूरत क्या एफएटीएफ को वहां कुछ भी नहीं नजर आता कभी हिंदुस्तान के अंदर जो है वो जो मुसलमानों का कत्लेआम हो रहा है उनकी हमलाक जलाई जा रही है वहां उनको कुछ नजर नहीं आता एक पाकिस्तान है जिसमें सब कुछ स्मूथली चल रहा है कोई भी हुकूमत है वो जमुरी हुकूमत जमुरी तरीके से अपना काम कर रही है लेकिन हम ही क्यों उनको कटकते हैं कि 22 करोड़ عوام जो थी कल उनकी सांसें ऊपर नीचे लटकी हुई थी जो ही आपका ये पैगाम आया तो हमें सुकून हुआ जबकि वहां पे शायद एक अरब से भी ज्यादा عوام है लेकिन उन्हें कोई परवाह नहीं है ना उनको है ना मोदी को है जी प्लीज थैंक यू ओके ठीक है सो बेसिकली देखें आपने बिल्कुल जो कहा उससे मैं बिल्कुल اختلاف नहीं कर सकती और जैसे मैंने पहले कहा हम ये चीज बार-बार कहते रहे और मुझे ये कहने में कोई दिक्कत नहीं है कि पाकिस्तान के ऊपर पॉलिटिकल प्रेशर पड़ा है 
पाकिस्तान के ऊपर जो पाकिस्तान का इलोंगेटेड प्रोसेस रहा जो पाकिस्तान से एक्सपेक्टेशन स्काई हाई थी उन पर यकीन एक पोलिटिकल एंगल उसका यकीन था ठीक है और आपने डिप्लोमेटिक इंगेजमेंट करके पोलिटिकल एंगल को न्यूट्रलाइज करने की कोशिश की बिकॉज दूसरी तरफ एक मुल्क अगर बहुत इंटेंसिव आपके खिलाफ एक बनाए कैंपेन बनाए तो उसको आपको करना पड़ता है जो फैटिव का जो तरीका है उसमें म्यूचुअल इवेल्यूएशन रिपोर्ट एम रिपोर्ट जिसको कहते हैं वो इंडिया की ड्यू है ट्वेंटी में Uh, हर मुल्क की म्यूचुअल इवेल्यूएशन रिपोर्ट हर थोड़े uh, महीनों सॉरी uh, सालों बाद होती है और uh, इंडिया की ड्यू है 2023 में सो वी वुड ऑब्वियसली हम ये चीज को एम्फोसाइज करते रहे हैं कि अगर यहाँ पे फेवरेट्स हो या कई मुल्कों पे ज्यादा ज्यादा uh, uh, नुकता चीनी किए जाए और कई मुल्कों को बिल्कुल ना देखा जाए तो उसमें बहुत सख्त प्रॉब्लम uh, आती है और क्रेडिबिलिटी उसकी खत्म हो जाती है तो uh, आप यू नो पार्शली अग्रीन विद वॉट यू से और आपका जो आपने एफ का पता पूछा तो मैं आपको ये बता रही हूँ कि 2023 में उनकी रिपोर्ट भी एफ में ड्यू है थैंक यू मैम दिस इज जरगुन शाह फ्रॉम हियर ऑन दिस साइड जरगुन शाह फ्रॉम जियो टेलीविजन मैम एक तो हमारे जो जनरल पाकिस्तानी पब्लिक है जो व्यूअर्स हैं आपको सुन रहे हैं उनके लिए ये बता दीजिए उनकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग के लिए कि ग्रे लिस्ट से निकलने के बाद फोरी फोरी पाकिस्तान को फवायद क्या होंगे इसके बेनिफिट्स क्या होंगे और दूसरा इफ यू लाइक टू स्पीक इट इज नॉट रिलेटेड टू एफ ए टी एफ इट इज अ डिफरेंट क्वेश्चन बट इफ यू वट इज द अपडेट विद यू विज द रिटर्न ऑफ जनरल परवेज मुशरफ थैंक यू अनफॉर्चुनेटली डोंट है दूसरा आपने पूछा फवायद क्या होंगे मैं दो चीजें आपने मौका दिया मैं दो चीजें एम्फोसाइज करना चाहूंगी क्योंकि यहाँ पे दोनों चीजों से हमें गुरेज करना है ये कहना कि जी बहुत कुछ हो गया लेट्स सेलिब्रेट उससे भी गुरेज करना है बिकॉज अभी हम प्रोसेस में हैं और ये कहना कि जी हमने तो कहा था ग्रेलियर से निकल आएंगे ग्रेलियर से तो निकले नहीं ये भी गलत है राइट right? क्योंकि हर चीज का एक प्रोसीजर होता है ग्रेलियस में डलने का भी एक प्रोसीजर होता है ग्रेलियस से निकलने का भी प्रोसीजर होता है इस वक्त हमने ग्रेलियस से निकलने का प्रोसीजर का पहला और इनशाला आखिरी मरहला शुरू कर लिया ठीक है बट आप ग्रेलियस से इस मरहले के बगैर नहीं निकल सकते कोई मुल्क कभी भी नहीं निकला ये एक